For months, the HRD minister, Smriti Irani, has made it clear that there is no interference in the running of the IITs. There is no such thing as saffronization of higher education. But now details are emerging on just what prompted one of the country's finest nuclear scientists, Dr. Anil Kakotkar, to resign on the 12th of March after a massive disagreement with Smriti Irani. You can't be uh, deciding uh, a choice of uh, IIT directors. director or three IIT directors among 36 uh, in, a, in a six or seven hour process. My unease was the earlier process, everything was set aside. And if you set aside everything and then you decide like that, then you are running a lottery. So, sir, in this case, in this IIT case, where do you think the pressure came from? From civil servants or from the po po political leader, the minister? Well, you know it. Why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> See, don't say you know it because, you know, we know whatever we know from rumours. No, no, I think it, it's not as if uh, there was pressure. It's the question was uh, a particular process was set aside. And you thought the set process was set aside without discussion or arbitrarily? Uh, well, in a sense, uh, well, at least to, to me, it looks like that. Well, the big question we are asking this evening is the, is the process uh, of the manner in which the IITs have been dealt with by this government, is it undermining the institutions? That's what we're looking at this evening. Joining us, Professor K. L. Chopra is an ex-director of IIT Kharagpur. Mihir Sharma is the associate editor of the business editor of the business standard. Arvind Gupta, national head of the IT cell of the BJP and CR Keshavan of the Congress. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Gupta, let me come uh, to you first. The basic point mentioned by uh, Anil Kakotkar now in that interview to NDTV was that the process by which three IIT directors were selected was entirely wrong, basically making the point that there were 36 people who were shortlisted, an interview process of six to seven hours. Uh, in other words, the entire process was a bit of a joke. This is one of his primary concerns with the manner in which Smriti Irani was going about the business of selecting directors to these topmost institutes. Well, uh, you know, uh, while we cannot comment on what, what happened inside the interview room and the selection process, I think uh, there is, the minister is well within her right. She is, after all, chair of the panel. And she's a guardian of uh, the, the institutions as, as a head of the ministry. And she is well within her right to see what, uh, how the process can be made better or how the, uh, uh, you know, uh, if she's done a lot of homework on the candidates, uh, whether that can be brought out during the interview panel. And uh, that's exactly what she would have done. But, uh, you know, I think the larger uh, implication of interfering with the functioning of IIT is what we are discussing here, I mean, yes. which is wrong. This okay. is an administrative matter. There is no academic uh, interference. There is no faculty appointment interference. There is no curriculum interference. And that's where IITs excel. But from an administrative point of view, the minister is well within her right to actually, uh, you know, because she is the chair of the panel, she is actually the reporting ministry. So she is well within her rights to, uh, to actually understand the process and make it better. No, but Mr. Gupta, that's quite questionable because there has been interference in the way the IITs function in, on several occasions. For example, the director of IIT Delhi offered to resign. He was asked to stay put for the moment after allegations were made about what IIT Delhi was doing in Mauritius. There has been examples of well, how again, it's an administrative aspects issue. of see, the RSS see, have actually said that you cannot have a canteen which serves non-vegetarian for students cannot be sitting in the same place where vegetarian food and non-vegetarian food in the IITs no, are being served all, together. These are, all, these are simple straightforward no, no. examples. See, as, as, see, as, oh. a, as, a, as a person who has <laughs> gone through uh, IIT education uh, and is product of the same system, I don't think so. And I, by the way, also serve on the board of the uh, Pan-IIT uh, Alumni Association. I, I, I think this is speculative. Uh, the clear thing is... Uh, I think you have to distinguish between administrative control and administrative uh, feedback versus academic and faculty inputs and uh, curriculum inputs. And I think we are confusing the two issues. Mr. Keshavan, would you like to come in over here that if you actually look at the crux at how the IITs are running, there could yeah. be a difference of opinion. But the argument that there is Vish interference is wrong. Vishnu, uh, with respect to the HRD ministry, you know, the last year, you know, the HRD ministry has been plagued and beleaguered by many controversies. And uh, 
the first thing i want to say here is see mr anil katkorkar ji is a very you know very senior person well reputed he is uh, the most trusted and he has been a former nobody chairman of the nobody is debating that nobody is debating that and he has no political axe to grind he is a political and i just want to bring in one point vishnu uh, anil katkorkar ji has been the you know governing board chairman of iit bombay for three terms about nine years since 2006 has he ever raised any question of interference before till now no why has he questioned the way in which the hrd ministry has interfered with the functioning of the iits and see the language he's used and you know uh, about three people of iit directors have been trying to clarify among 36 and 6 hours even as an iit student as my colleague you know friend said you know you will have a much rigorous process here you are looking at heads who have to have a holistic vision they have to you know talk, think about uh, have ideas about academic and you know research programs and also chart the way forward how can you just you know side step the whole issue and let me also say this it's just not a congress accusation on april 17 vishnu mp's cutting across from the opposition whether it was a very senior member like mr d raja of the cpi or mr tyagi of nc you know jd and uh, mr Tripathi of NCP written, have written to the Rashtrapati. They have said, let, then they use the same words as Kakor Karji. They said there is a systematic, deliberate attempt to erode processes which govern the functioning of these institutions in the HRD Ministry. And this is a very serious accusation to the President saying that there has been RSS infiltration. And you meant, I mean, see, you, you no, take, for example, is, the National Book Trust. Who is heading my it friend, now? Baldev Sharma. Mr. Keshavan, one second. Arvind, Arvind, go ahead. Pancha Janya. Arvind, go ahead. Yes. What is happening is. there's a there is there is a lot of speculation and you are merging a lot of issues the the issues are about administrative responsibility uh, at the end of the day you brought up the issue of iit or uh, the iit campus uh, in mauritius the the financial approval lies with the ministry if the ministry is well within her, and the minister is well within her rights because she is responsible to the people and the parliament and she has to answer why there is a new iit being set up in mauritius and not in different states those are the typical questions that come up in the parliament so so i i don't see a reason that uh, that you know she she does not exercise that right Vishnu. and question and and actually tries to understand why uh, a new iit is being set up in mauritius where okay. the I, some of the iits in india are languishing meher come in over here uh, why Just should one necessarily Vishnu. question what smriti irani is doing Um, well, I think that Mr. Gupta is absolutely right in some way. In some ways, which is that there is a difference between administrative uh, control or supervision and academic interference, and that is an important difference. And what we are talking about here is some form of ad ad excessive administrative interest. Um, but the question that we should really be asking is: Why is the selection committee for the heads of the IITs supervised by or contained the minister herself? All right. Why is it that uh, there is no professional search system put into place that will allow for a depoliticized uh, um, way in which the heads of major universities and centers of excellence like the IIT can be chosen? I mean, it is quite tragic that we don't have that yet. And I'll tell you, the, there is a reason why we don't have that yet. And the reason that we don't have that is because. across uh, 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 governments but uh, um, we have wanted to control exactly who runs our universities and our iits and we have tried to ensure that they are politically appropriate mm -hmm. now in this government um, maybe things will be a little worse one of the reasons why one out of every four central universities is headless is because if you want to find someone who is close to the rss and can hit these places you're going to have to look a little harder it's just one of the great tragedies of the indian right in this country that it doesn't quite have the same level of academic heft as a left or the center so um the truth is that as long as you have political interference in choosing a political uh, 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 desire to yes. choose fellow travelers to head these places you are going to have the force empty universities you know, uh, 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 problematic you know you uh, raise larger so points and I, i want to uh, arvind ji you know uh, we are talking about the iits but i think a lot of the questions about the iits are linked to the the manner in which there has been interference uh, these are allegations of how the hrd ministry works or the government works with several academic institutions let me give you examples right the prime minister's office got uh, intervened vetoed the appointment of the director of the jawaharlal nehru center jawaharlal nehru center for advanced scientific research in bangalore there's not been a director for a year all right the ministry uh, interference led to the resignation in march of anil kakotkar who we have mentioned i'll give you another example in march on the grounds of a technicality the pmo 
rejected the appointment of the physicist Sandeep Trivedi as the director of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in the country, what the, the finest institute of its type in the country. So therefore, if, these, if this interference is coming at the level of the PMO and there are examples coming from the HRD ministry as well, the word interference is the first that comes to mind. I think that's what the larger issue here is. That, see, uh, no, but the, the thing is, Vishnu, I think we are bringing about interference and confusing between interference and making sure the processes are being followed uh, and, and, and taking more active interest in, in issues. See, I, I mean, uh, Mihir, for example, mentioned that, you know, um, why is that there is, uh, you know, not more professional inputs into the selection process? You know, I would take it further. There should be an international selection process. There should be people from all across the world. A lot of changes probably are required. And if, if those changes mean interference, I think we will keep, we will not go upwards on the rankings or we will not achieve things that we want to achieve versus we will keep following old processes which probably need to be, you know, re-engineered okay. for going forward. Professor Chopra, as somebody who has been so closely associated Vishnu. with the IITs uh, as a director two times over, how, in what sort of a crisis, if any, does the IIT system now find itself? The government believes it is completely valid in trying to interfere to a certain extent it, to, to improve the institutions themselves. On the other hand, there is the entire issue of autonomy. Where do you stand, sir? Absolutely. Autonomy is absolutely essential for any institution of higher, higher learning, particularly universities and IIT certainly. We had autonomy. IIT had good autonomy until 80s. Is that, been, no eroded? Mister, no is that been eroded? No, that has been eroded completely. Why has it been uh, eroded uh, yeah, in, this, okay. in the case of this government? Well, it, actually, erosion. Incidentally, I was, I've been selected, I've been selected uh, director twice. Yes. I have not seen the minister. I have not actually been called at all to see anybody. It's a peer review. Somebody has a peer review, and they simply asked me that this is what we think that uh, you are the right person for IIT Kharagpur. Would you like to go there? That's how it was. I was appointed. Okay. And this was in eighty. I think the problem started uh, with the, the uh, with the minister uh, BJP when took in government. That is when uh, Murli Minor Joshi, he is the one who started interfering, and he is the one who appointed people who are who were more closer to our, what he thought was right. He is the one who decided that he, his words should be taken. Actually, a minister has no business at all to chair such a meeting. It should be done by peers and peer reviews on the basis of the peer reviews. In fact, the uh, responsibility for running the institute, if you want accountability at all, in any institution, it should be, it should, it rests with the board of governors. Okay.